Hey everyone, this is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching with today's video. And it's related to, sometimes you make a quilt and it doesn't reach all the way up to cover your pillows. And this week, that's what I've been working on is a way to fix that because both of the quilts the people wanted to use needed something else to cover those pillows. And those are, then we're gonna make an, an ornamental covering for a pillow called a sham, which is also called a false front. So I've got two kinds that I want to show you, and I'm going to start with the first one that's the yo-yo cover that I've been working on. And if you ever saw Mary Jean and me, she likes to make these yo-yos. Well, we had that one nice big one that covered the bed, and now she wants a yo some yo-yo shams. So I was coming up with that. That's what this is about, the first one. I started out because I had to get the yo-yos and put them in um, some kind of order, it's just a 20 by 30 piece of paper for a queen size sham and you have to consider the um, hems for the outside or the seaming. Once I got that, I took my floating board that's got the batting on it and I laid all of them out. When I actually got the one put together, it's just kind of funny that I really could have had another row and another column, but you'll see that this one fits pretty well. This is the finished sham laying on a pillow, and it looks kind of funny laying on the floor, but on the bed it would probably be propped up. Now, with this one, this is really a false front because when you turn it over, you're going to see that I just put a solid panel on the back. And I did this before with another yo-yo quilt, that floating yo-yo quilt. There wasn't any reason to make it so it would open in the back. Well, what's neat is this is like a piece of history for us because the backing I used was wide sheeting from our plant that was produced a long time ago in our social circle cotton mill, which was a cannon mill for years and years, and Cannon had it from 1913 to 1971, and then it was bricked up. And you might even remember later that it um, it burned, but somebody set a fire. But the wide sheeting that was made there in 1957, they had 15,264 spindles, and I thought, I thought, I wish I could have seen that. I wouldn't want to be around all that cotton, but uh, she, Mary Jean had a big piece of that from the cotton mill. And so we're using that and put that on the back of this one. And with the seams on the edges, I folded those in and pressed them. And then I actually took some adhesive, permanent adhesive, fab, fabric adhesive, and put a little bit on each one of the green ones going around. And now I'm gonna go back and do some general tacking down in places. It's not gonna take much. So and that's one way. And this is the second way. And it's like the last video where we made the deck I made the decorative pillows and I used an envelope back. And that's what I did on this next one that goes with my grandmother's flower garden. And I actually was able to take from that 15 inch square that I had done for the others and change it up and make the same proportions. So in the notes, I'm gonna put, if you were gonna do a uh, 20 by 30 pillow, you'd know about how much to make your insert part. The only thing that I did differently was because this was so much bigger than the pillows, instead of putting one inch hem right there where the opening is, I put um, two inches. I added that on there and then hemmed it. And the easiest way to put pillows in this is to slide it in this big front part first and then pull the other little part up and finish that. And I've got two 20 by 30 shams to go with that quilt. But here again, because this one's totally hand stitched, I took that piece of paper that I had marked for 20 by 30 and I set my two flowers where I thought they would go and found that one row right between them was gonna be great, just like it was in the quilt. 
and then I started building going out. But I, you know, hand stitching, I didn't want to build it so far out that I'm wasting a lot of effort and time. I just wanted it to look really good. And then when I got finished with it, I went ahead and I put a quilt backing, um, a binding around the edges of it. That's the first one, and here's the other one for it. And I think those are going to be really nice. So that's just real quick. That's two ways that you could do the false front or the sham for a quilt. This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. If you liked this or enjoyed it or made you have an idea of your own, then please hit subscribe and like and even tell us what your idea is in the comments. Thank you.